Good morning, my name is Kirsty Dignam and I'm here to look at the energies for this week with today's Monday's Musings. Now we have just experienced a new moon in Scorpio for which I have written a blog about. Um, there's a lot, a lot occurring beneath the surface. However, it feels really important if we are to get any grasp of what is happening right now to acknowledge where we are. Not what we've done, not what we will step into as a result, but where we actually are. To bring the current reality we feel into position. I'm sat here with a weighted blanket on my lap. One, because it's cold and two, because it feels like a real need to ground <laughs> on another level. And even then, laughing almost took my breath away. <laughs> almost, gosh with the extreme intense energies that are coming up to be seen, to be felt, to be acknowledged. And we can really get caught up in what is needed of us. And the truth of the matter is, for the most part, if we can do that, if we can see, feel, acknowledge what is occurring for us, that awareness, that consciousness, being a living energy, will grow into whatever it needs to be. This weekend I've had a, a mammoth wobble, a real, oh, I don't know if I want to carry on doing what I'm doing, a necessary rocking of the foundations of who I believe I am, what I believe I'm here to offer. And I've been sharing that with some beautiful friends of mine and you know the feedback that and and sharing it on my social media as well because for me personally it feels really important to be a hundred percent authentic and honest with these natural <laughs> natural occurrences you know these natural shake-ups these natural changes in where we stand in our own perception of ourselves these necessary um movements that are required these necessary shake-ups it feels for me personally important to gift them, not only to myself, but to others. And I've really had that reflected back this week. I've really had reflected back a lot of well-meaning um, words of wisdom. Um, really humbly receiving the guidance that others are here to share and being part of that learning process rather than believing I need to do it all myself which is unheard of well not unheard of but improving for me that that vulnerability not only to share but to receive as well and in doing so I've also been informed that it allows others to wobble <laughs> not allows because it's going to happen anyway but helps others release this pressure, this judgment, this, this tension on their self, knowing that we're all doing it, that it happens to everybody, that it's natural, that it's part of the process, that this almost feeling of not being good enough is a wonderful opportunity to acknowledge, first and foremost, how small we actually are in the big scheme of things, because we are in a humble, beautiful, heart-expanding way. But also when we feel this not being good enough, to walk alongside, to really be present with the discomfort of that and the truth that we may not be reaching our fullest potential and the excitement of knowing there is so much more to discover. It doesn't always feel that way, right? It comes through often as a lightning bolt oh my god I cringe shame guilt fear oh not wanting to face it because it's uncomfortable energy quite often my own did this weekend absolutely based on wounds that I carry based on triggers glimmers um enlightenment that I hadn't quite seen in my own shadow and that can be really uncomfortable if we step into the whole process rather than witnessing and observing ourselves included but my goodness as a result 
yeah, really feeling into the power of the dark mother, of the guiding force that says you might not want to look at this, but if you can have the courage, the perseverance, the belief in yourself that you can do this, that you can see what you are now ready to see, I promise you the growth that is available as a result is exactly what you're looking for. So profound, yes, we do have that new moon in Scorpio. And that is in the air. However, we also have tomorrow a day called Lighten Up, Loosen Up Day. And it also feels beautifully balanced that we be aware in a grounded manner, you know, really sinking into what is occurring of what is no longer sustaining us, what may be actually closing us in, so that we can lighten it up, loosen it up, let go of what we now no longer need to step forward into that next bit. Yes, there are some home truths to face this week, but nothing that we don't already know, nothing that we don't already potentially have the sensation of relief when we finally see this play out in front of us when we finally allow ourselves to experience this like oh, okay okay it's time so is there anything else to share on that before we get into the reading one of the things i really sense is knowing how deep we have to go <laughs> How deep we actually have to go into this? Are we going as deep as needed or are we overcomplicating what is already blatantly at the surface ready to be seen? Sometimes when we try and explain things, sometimes when we make the process more than it actually is, it's coming from that same energy of not truly wanting to see what is occurring right in front of us. So this week there is a fine line between... Yeah, going too deep. And I never thought I would say that, but, but between going too deep and being able to actually move forward. So even that, as I try and step into that energy, it's like, you know, that was then, that was then. So it's bringing it back to the present moment all the time. And although we are doing a reading for the energies this week, what feels like key throughout every single thing, whether it's healing, a trigger that you're going through, um, a conversation that you're having, a reading that you may be watching or giving or, or whatever, the present moment is key. Okay, so yes, things can be brought up to the surface, to be felt, to be seen, to be acknowledged in this present moment. There's a reason we are gifted that because it's a different place and time. Okay, we can, from that perspective, examine excuse me, what happened, but also feel into what could occur from where we are, not from where we were or where we'd like to be. And that is what's going to bring the home truth this week, the present moment. So I am moving from the country and there's a high chance I will be going into the city and it is against everything that I want, that I always believed, dreamed, desired. But in this present moment, unless a wad of money lands in my lap, the current situation I find myself in is unsustainable, unrealistic, unhealthy. Even though I may feel being in the countryside, being away from everything is beneficial to me, it was, it isn't now. It was needed in order for me to re-tap into the peace that I actually am. I now have that. The next stage of learning for me will be to take that into chaos, to see just how peaceful I can be. It's very easy to be at peace in a peaceful situation, yeah? It's very easy to be able to see other um, perspectives when we're not involved in it, yeah? So this week, being very aware from this present moment where the lessons are being taken to the next stage, through your own application of them. I'm really recognizing at the moment there may be certain things that aren't playing to your advantage, but they're actually helping you to keep small, coming from a place of not quite feeling ready. A lot of the times we don't know we're ready until we try. 
And that's part of the joy of life. That's part of the grounding into the experience. I remember as a midwife having a lot of parents that didn't feel ready to be parents. Well, you won't be until you are a parent because you can read all the books in the world, but until you actually do it, you're not going to know what you're capable of. Um, and that's that real dark mother scorpion energy coming through, that real up you get, on you get with it. Now, that doesn't mean that that lacks compassion. That doesn't mean that it's not yin. That doesn't mean that it isn't loving, nurturing. Sometimes the kindest things we can do for ourselves are to look at where we're being unkind in our own limitations, where we are holding ourselves back. So... This weekend with the Moon Aiki, I connected to my own daykeeper energy before passing on the daykeeper rights. And I was quite surprised, um, first and foremost, to see the, the strength in ceremonial power that is occurring um, and how far I've grown with that. We created a sand painting and the, th the aspects that I put into the sand painting on the earth have already come to fruition. Um, and that was Saturday. Okay, so the potential energy there, if we connect to Pachamama, if we can connect to this dark mother energy, is huge, absolutely huge on a level of physical manifestation. If we can have the courage to connect to that wisdom in the darkness, that, that light that is found within the shadow, that tough love, and recognize that that could be just as compassionate. Okay, it doesn't mean get up, get on with it. It just means... My mother used to say to me, you're better than that. Now I feel that in my chest. She never meant I wasn't good enough. She would always say it when I couldn't see how good I was. Okay, so this week being very aware that the things that may be pointing out where we don't feel good enough are there to remind us that we are and that we always have been. But it is us that has lost sight of that. The other thing by connecting to my own daykeeper energy um, Saturday before passing on the rights, I found myself inside Mount Etna, literally inside, but when I was 18, I traveled to Mount Etna and stood in her presence before she erupted. Um, I think she erupted the following year and has done subsequently. But to be in the space and connected and grounded to such power, to be in the presence of such awe, recognition, not fear, awe and recognition, knowing at any moment this incredible energy could destroy me. You know, knowing at one point I couldn't actually see in front of my in front of my face. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face because the fog that came up, there was no clarity, there was no certainty, there was no vision. But I felt the power and the knowing that I was going to be okay, that I was held in this in this dark strength and presence this week we may be reminded of that <laughs> however we are able to be and however we may need to be scorpio new moon right but the next day like i say tuesday is what we call lulu day or lighten up loosen up day so remember it is all about letting go of what isn't serving you? And I wanted to put a big thing on that then, but no, what isn't serving you and your highest potential as we move into next year? Again, next year being the strength card, being the star card. It is about us recognizing the sacred vessel that we are, the hollow bone that we are, the ability to create with source, with divine, with our highest potential, whatever you want to call it. Now, I don't have any expectations on that what I mean is that can be the meals that you're cooking the care for our future generation the um, shop shelves that you are stacking so we can all eat the guidance that you are giving the ceremonies that no one knows about that you are part of the getting up in the morning sometimes against all odds right what I mean is taking that to the next level of your potential that is there next year well, it's there in every moment. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not good enough. It just means there's so much to you. So much to us all that we often lose sight of. So with that in mind, 14 minutes, I am going to quickly look into the energies this week. But it very much feels like that's what it's all about. 
Okay. <laughs> At the bottom of the pack, we do have judgment and it, it moved to one side. The reason I'm sharing it is it because it moved to one side and it feels really important that we do that this week, that we move any judgment that we have on ourselves, on each other, on judgment itself to one side so that we can see it. Not so that we can ignore it or get rid of it, but so that we can see it and then bring it back. Okay, so we are in 2023. For the next however long we're going to be in the year 20, which is the judgment card. Okay, so we're going to have these things coming up. Why? Because they're helping us recognise where we may have walked away from our light or where we may need to walk away from situations that no longer bring that forth within us. Judgment comes nine times out of ten when we're not reaching our own potential. Or is that a judgment on, on my part? Why are you judging? Where does it come from? This week in particular, really feeling into that. Not from a point of trying to get rid of it or fixing it, but for utilising it as the shadow, as the medicine, as the light that it can bring. You know, a lot of the time, some of the things that we're envious of is because it's what we actually want. I had a dear friend point that out to me once when I was envious about something in particular because, hey, heads up, we all get jealous. We all get envious. We all yearn for things. We all see things outside of ourselves and think, oh, I wish I was a bit more like that. <laughs> okay, so really recognising this week anything that we feel and the judgments that we have on that is going to be key if we're to move forward now from this this deep-seated grief of the life that we haven't allowed ourselves to live up until this point by recognizing we have done the best that we can and we're now ready for the next stage that was what i was going to share one of my friends uh, suggested that me sharing my wobble gave them almost not gave them permission to um, wobble, but helped them feel better about wobbling themselves. And I was quite surprised at that because I do firmly believe that I'm always sharing my flaws, <laughs> always sharing how I cock up, how I mess up. Um, because I feel like it's really poignant, that it's really important. And for me, nine times out of 10, these wobbles occur just as I'm about to level up. And I likened it to moving up a year in school. You know, when you're at the top of the class, you've done all you can in that year, and then you move up a set or you move into the next year and suddenly you're at the bottom of the class, right? And it's like, I've got to do this all again. I, I don't know again, I feel uncertain again. And for me, what that does is then bring forth my own soul's curriculum that I almost have to feel into that so that I can gauge where I would like to be, gauge this inadequate feeling that I have so that my soul can go, okay, so these are the lessons you now need then to complete this year, however long that year may be. Obviously, academic year being a metaphor, but however long that journey may be, these are the lessons you now need to be at the top of your game for that. So, <laughs> two of pentacles, right? What we're feeling here is almost like a uh, what we physically feel, what we physically allow ourselves to feel, almost sends, sending out like a beacon to our higher self of what it is we need. But we're not going to get that if we don't allow ourselves to feel it, okay? And maybe sometimes we know that. <laughs> so I really, I can really sense like a... Um, self-sabotage type energy here where if I don't allow myself to feel these things then I don't get what I need and then I can be like well I tried right <laughs> the tower card yeah really this week seeing where we are holding ourselves back without the judgment but at least seeing with awareness where we are holding ourselves back for whatever reason and it feels quite important not to get too involved in the reasons why we may do it um, because the rational explanation of it all, the logical understanding of it all can hold us back as well. But just allowing that to crack us open. We're seeds of potential. What do seeds do? They break open. Allowing these realizations this week just to crack us open. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and just really feeling into that. So, energies this week on a day to day basis and how to navigate them. And yes, I am asking on a day to day basis. From my own perception of needing to break it down because we know that all energy merges into one right but sometimes if we can break things down we believe we perceive that we can cope with it better it may not be the case this week it may be quite full on and it may be all at once but let's just see we're back to the two of pentacles 
<laughs> even though I've shuffled them at the bottom of the back pack we're back to the two of pentacles it is that balance here of our physical emotional spiritual needs right so on the Monday on the Tuesday <laughs> Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday overall I'm so pleased to see that card so I say that I'm pleased to see the card because it's the Hierophant and I'm I'm pleased to see the learning I'm pleased to see the wisdom that has been gained and it's that that makes me smile so this week in particular keeping things light I'm pleased to see this card because it's the only deck I've ever seen that has the Hierophant a dogmatic or potentially dogmatic approach to spirituality um, of what we should know of the keys to our own consciousness of being awake all of it here very light actually very light and also known as the keeper of the sacred very fun very humorous um and it does feel like it's that that's going to get us through this week but recognizing we can go up and down those stairs <laughs> of enlightenment as many times as we want yeah strengthening our muscles you know exercising our soul what goes up comes down what what is down goes up vice versa really feeling into that this week and having joy in the lessons that we have discovered having joy in the wisdom that we have gained is going to be key overall for the energies this week and i felt <laughs> need to slow hang on When it comes to feelings this week really slowing down because they are it's like the moment we say okay i'm going to be open to what i feel <laughs> all this wisdom all this knowledge all this you know when you're seen it's like the moment we feel our emotions we're seeing a, another side of ourselves that has longed to be seen for so long that it's like a, a child that wants to chat and say everything that has happened and everything that has occurred and it's like okay putting time by for that is going to be the real changer this week putting time by for what we feel really acknowledging them really doing something with it not to not to get rid of not to fix not to heal but have fun with this these feelings because it does feel like a quickening it does feel as if the vibration wants to lift it wants to lift but in order to be lifted it needs to be seen when we see the shadow when we see the hidden the new moon scorpio right new moons hidden shadow hidden secrecy hidden when we see what is hidden and it is no longer hidden and seen it becomes exciting it becomes less dense less heavy less frightening more wow enlightening more lifted more higher in its frequency and it is that that's going to change things because on the monday we do have the wheel and it's about taking chances it's about gambling it's about really feeling into our own ability to stand in the light and dark here can you see this the light and dark our own ability to balance on the changes that have happened to really feel into the lessons that have been taught to really acknowledge where we are in regards to them and i feel that in my third eye i feel almost as if my physical eyes are becoming blurred and my third eye is seeing more here particularly on the monday so what may not be obvious to you physically trusting the inner ability to see beyond what is straight in front of you so allowing what is in front of you to open your eyes to a greater inner sight is going to be the changing point on the monday on the tuesday we are going to be shown where it's all become a bit too much we are going to be shown the opportunity we have by recognizing where things are too much the opportunity we then have to let go to move forward because it is the ten of wands so we can be very um i want to say it again aware it feels like awareness is the thing today and i, I really feel that in my back particularly on the left side we can be very aware intuitively of where we've reached the end of the line what are we going to do with that awareness 
Are we going to stay in that situation? This is the 10 of wands. This has the ability to move forward now. If we can really look at what we want to carry, okay, really look at how we can seek aid in order to do that. Who out there can help us carry this forward? Yeah, how can we help others look at what they're carrying forward? What path has now been worn so thin that it's time to move on and on the tuesday we're going to be showing that on lulu day lighten up loosen up yes perfect card for that day where can we lighten things up where can we loosen things up you know that might be self-care it might be going for a walk a massage meeting up with friends whatever how can we lighten this situation up on the tuesday on the Wednesday, we have the potential energy that we could really tap into throughout the week, and that is movement, dance, recognizing our own stability in movement. Okay, so the four of wands being at home with the rhythms that we find ourselves in, whether they're chaotic, whether they're um, smooth, whether they're slow, whatever they may be, being at home in our own body means regardless what is happening around us, we can celebrate the vibrational changes that are occurring. So if your life was a song right now, would it be a slow song, a fast song? What anthem would you use to explain your life maybe pick a song and dance that out maybe this weekend we did body mapping we picked um music connected to what it is we were trying to achieve in our life and we danced it out allowing our feet our movement our rhythm to become i can see my lips moving in the camera our voice allowing our vibration to become our unheard voice letting the earth hear our spirit in everything that we do on the Wednesday. On the Thursday, we have the Four of Pentacles and we do have a real, <laughs> it almost feels like I want to look at what we have on the Thursday. What do we actually have? What are we actually holding on to? What is tangible here? What is important here? What is our priority here on the Thursday again like me with the countryside yes it is my dream but actually the cost the cost has really helped me realize that it isn't the dream and on the Thursday we may be feeling into that at what cost to ourselves to each other to our soul to our purpose here at what cost is it worth it are we worth it Whenever I do anything in life, I try and do it from a risk assessment perspective. And that's that two of pentacles, right? That balanced perspective, a ten of pentacles underneath. A risk assessment. Is it worth the risk? So, yes, Monday we can be looking at things that may be a bit of a gamble. Is it worth the risk? Or as my mother would say, what's the alternative? A lot of people say to me, I can't believe you managed to do that, Kirsty, or you do this, or you do that. Not like I'm amazing but there are certain things that I really go out of my comfort zone really go out of my comfort zone and there seems to be this assumption that I'm not frightened though of course I am petrified absolutely petrified but the risk of not doing it and the way that I would feel is greater the calling to do it is greater so this week really on the Thursday in particular really feeling into the cost of doing what you're doing or not doing it on the front on the Saturday no sorry Friday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday, that was the Thursday on the Friday same thing really the Thursday and Friday energy do merge into each other because the cost is to who you are and your place here you know what we do or don't do impacts that so really being aware of our presence here in the world on the friday and any changes that may need to be put into place where we have made it more difficult by not connecting to the rhythm of that by holding on to beliefs that may not physically be in alignment with where we are or where we're trying to go i want to help people in my community we are potentially today looking at a, at a house that is just around the corner from the shop that we own that will put us back into the community so making yourself part of the solution not the problem standing in the energy you are trying to benefit rather than separate from 
recognizing that a lot of our path is connected to who we are and what we offer. Not so that we no longer see our stories as negative or positive beyond that, but just part of the makeup, just part of the tale of the world within which we chose to be. You know, within the healer's path, the, the wounded warrior, the however you want to look at it, the, the fool's journey. It, Yeah, just knowing that you're here and everything you have experienced is part of who you are and what you have to offer. Thank you. <laughs> A little bit of clarity needed on that on the Friday. But if we can just remember that, everything that we are feeling is part of who we are. Valid, recognisable, needing to be seen normally by ourselves, so that we can really appreciate what it is we offer. <laughs> After the weekend, I really looked at um, different things that were coming up for me and really um, exposed myself vulnerably to a narrative that had been going on in my mind, hidden, actually. And we don't have to do any of that. But unless we do that, we can always be... Um, uncertain of the next part of this journey I needed that this weekend it wasn't comfortable but I needed it and this week in particular certain things may rise that we think particularly on the Saturday oh gosh I just don't need to keep hearing this I just don't need to keep going out keep going over this then if you don't walk away mentally if not turn around and face what has been actually going on subconsciously for you yes we can pinpoint that this person triggered this that this caught this brought up this this brought up that but actually if it wasn't within us it wouldn't have happened so on the saturday in particular recognizing that the endurance stops when we take responsibility gosh <laughs> But on the Sunday, once we've done that, we can come back to that energy again of lightening it up. One of the other things about the blog on the Monday and today in particular was about letting go, giving it over with things that we may not know the answers to, with things that we may have tried to figure out and we just do not understand. Give it over. Surrender to the process. Let it go. Again, that's the other side of the hierophant, the keeper of the sacred. Recognizing you can't do it all yourself. That ten of wands, giving over what you no longer wish to hold on to, giving over what you have tried to journey with, travel with, fix, sort, heal, whatever word you want to call it, and just letting it go. Giving it up now. On the Sunday in particular. Okay, so let's have a look overall. There is a sensation of, but then what? I give it up, but then what? Well, underneath the two of pentacles, okay, this balance between us and source, this co-collaboration between ourselves and our higher self, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, the divine. Underneath that is the ten of pentacles, recognizing that we are a child of the universe, okay? That we're not supposed to be doing it all on our own, that we need each other, that we need this higher guiding force. Otherwise, we'd just be an empty bone, an empty channel, an empty vessel with nothing. OK, we need our physical experiences. We need our humanity. We need um, embodiment. Yeah, we need physical embodiment of the very things that bring us joy, the very things that bring us life, hope, um, surrendering to that this week particularly in times of emotional darkness because we have the nine of cups here and the ten of swords underneath and I can keep going over this it feels like I can keep going over this message but underneath that we have the three of wands so one of the beautiful things of letting go of what we have no control over is we are brought face to face with responsibility over what we do and that this week is going to be that moment of truth Okay, so you have no say over that. There's nothing you can do about that. So can you please bring your energy back and focus on what you are being asked to do and move forward with that because it's that that's going to bring the physical joy, the emotional release, the 
surrender and connection to the next set of lessons that want to come through, the recognition that this is all sacred and that by allowing ourselves to feel what we are asked to feel, allowing ourselves to step into the roles we are being asked to step into, we become keeper of the sacred, we become the hierophant, we seek the wisdom of ourselves, the experience of life. So let's have a little look at that. We have one to it doesn't really feel like there's a huge amount to be added to that so i'm going to put that back that back that back we have three major arcanas here we have the hierophant the wheel and the world and i'm going to put the hierophant between them all um, if we can recognize in the very center of us all as the vessel of source we are the keeper of the sacred we are the the student and the teacher, we are here to learn from the experiences of life by connecting to the physical embodiment of our spirit. From that point, the changes can come forth individually for us, but also collectively in the wheel and the world. And that is the balance. Feeling things, allowing ourselves to experience life, to bring forth what needs to be shifted and what is being asked of us from source. So we can ask, yeah, particularly with manifestation, we can ask, I would really like X, Y, and Z. Okay, what is the price? At what cost? What are you willing to experience in order to step into this? <laughs> I asked many, many years ago for a field that is that four of wands, right? That we can teach and dance and sing and yeah, so I'm experiencing an awful lot that is standing in the way, but also has much to show me about the energy that will be standing in that field, presenting itself as my, as me, you know, and where I am out of alignment with that. And this week, yes, that is going to be what we are shown. Where are we in alignment with the very things that we have asked for? What is now being asked of us in order to reconnect to the dream, the vision, the inner sight of what it is we truly, truly want? in the present moment okay so we have two wand cards the ten of wands and the page of wands if we do not want it to become too much this week then we need to give it over we need to have fun with it we need to loosen it up lighten it up celebrate the voodoo of lulu yeah check out the blog that i've written this week very very much about that what helps us to lighten it up what helps us to loosen this grasp of a reality that in all honesty, a lot of us don't actually want to carry forward anymore. What's going to help us with that? Surrendering to that on a spiritual level. Oh, it could be spirituality. And that could bring forth judgments. So you just saw my own there. That could bring forth judgments on that. That could bring forth um, our views that we may have carried for too long. So for me, spirituality has been bloody heavy it's been hard work it's been enduring it's been oh my god and there's so much information out there to support that you know this dark night of the soul this rites of passage this um spirituality isn't about being nice it's do 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 and it's about tearing away all your reality and that has been my truth for a very very long time and it has been valid and it has been needed now in my own journey it's time to let that go. It's time to embrace a lighter side for me where I can and what and just laugh and lighten it up because spirituality for me personally is the actuality of my spirit. And my spirit isn't all heavy and enduring and mm, okay, but I am having to rewire and reprogram a narrative that I've carried for a very long time in regards to that. So this week in particular, what is the light to you? What is spirituality to you? What is life to you? What is the experience of it all? Can you be happy in times of turmoil? Can you be at peace in times of chaos? You know, what is really being asked of you this week? We then have, oh gosh, I forgot. We have a third one card actually. So yes, giving it over, but recognizing in order to create with that finding stability finding stability in your own rhythm your own vibration what it is you bring forth in this world and really standing in that is going to be key because then we have four of pentacles ah oh, i just feel relief i feel relief at letting go of what we thought kept us stable 
relief at letting go of the often unseen cost of being something that we're not. Relief of recognizing the changes that need to come into place, the ones that we haven't always listened to that have been there all the time. So in this card, this feminine character who's turning her, her face away from actually being seen. So they're going to focus. How ironic, let's come back. Not actually going to focus. In her ear, she is wearing an earring of the, with the rune Othello on, which is very much about change, very much about, you know, it doesn't matter how often we refuse to look at what is in front of us, eventually our body will scream and allow us to hear the language that we may often not want to have heard, seen or acknowledged because there's a cost, there's an underlying cost of holding on to things that no longer serve us, there's an underlying cost of holding on to even dreams that may not have been what they claim to be or what we thought they would be. They're, like I say, for me, staying in the country right now has kept me safe, beautifully so, until I could find that peace. And now, yeah, the cost is out of balance. This week in particular, looking at what brings us structure. You know, the number four is incredibly balancing, but incredibly restrictive as well. Being honest with ourselves in regards to that. Because mentally we have the seven of swords here. Mentally we have the... I just feel like I just want to let it all go blank now. To stop trying to figure it out, whether to move forward, whether to stay. To just be present in the sheer beauty of not knowing. And letting go of this need to understand everything trusting because when we talk about giving up when we talk about surrendering when we talk about letting go we assume it is to something outside of us but what we're doing is trusting ourselves trusting ourselves to keep going trusting ourselves to listen to that voice that says that we're not good enough on all different levels that may be highlighting where we feel like we are lacking but also maybe maybe suggesting a hidden truth in that where we aren't stepping into our potential because we're not trusting ourselves it's all mental this week as well or rather it's as we lead into the full moon now i don't know where the next full moon is where it lands or what it's in and that feels beautiful it feels like it doesn't matter it feels like that's where we're headed towards so this week in particular, it's the unseen that needs to come to light and the illumination that will happen as a result of that. And deep down inside the knowing <laughs> that that's what it's all about and where we may have been avoiding that by putting it into the control, the responsibility, the perception, projection of others. What is going to be pointed out to us hasn't already been known. It's just more us opening up to the awareness of that. With some joy, with some fun, with some... <laughs> so, okay, we're going to have one card overall. Ah, and then I'm going to call it quits. And it feels good. It feels good to say this is the best I can do. I've done what I can. Yeah, let's just have one to closure. Yeah, <laughs> nine of pentacles. The queen of cups is underneath that, but we know that. We know in order to really nurture the changes we must flow with our emotions we know that it's an old hawk message that we've always known what feels really poignant here is to recognize the why so there's lots of things that are coming to light this week that we know mentally emotionally spiritually physically oh yeah i kind of knew that okay so why do you need to know that now why is it coming to the surface now why what has been hidden has decided to be seen so that we can reach for the fruit that has been waiting as part of the growth. So that we can grasp what is now in front of us, ripe to be fed from in the Nine of Pentacles. The abundance of life and our experiences can only ever be that when we decide to pick from them when we decide to reach up for what is ultimately ours, our birthright, the wisdom of our own physical lessons 
and experiencing. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. May we all see ourselves for the growth that is so bloody obvious in front of us. Take care. Speak soon.